Hi everyone, uh, my name is Sasha Rush, and today I'm going to talk about TorchStruct, a library for deep structure prediction. You can get all this code on the GitHub link below. So I'm going to begin by reviewing the softmax function, one of the most important functions in modern natural language processing. Softmax takes as input a vector in k dimension, which we'll call the logit vector. This vector is projected to produce a categorical distribution over k different values. The projection happens by exponentiating each one of the dimensions of this vector and then normalizing. Softmax is used in about a zillion different uh, applications. It's key to multi-class classification for computing attention in models like Transformer and BERT. It's key for stochastic algorithms like Gumball Softmax and discrete variational autoencoders. It's key for techniques like entropy regularization. There's two key mathematical properties to know about the softmax. The first is the log partition function, which is used in the forward pass of the algorithm. We'll annotate this function as a and write it as simply the log of the denominator of the previous projection. In order to compute the gradient of this function for the backwards pass, we take a derivative with respect to each one of the different input dimensions. It turns out that these derivatives are just the same as the softmax for each of those values. Uh, and this tells us that really the key computation for basically anything you want uh, with respect to the softmax is simply this log partition function A. Now to compute this function, we often just enumerate the sum. And luckily this can be done very efficiently uh, on modern hardware such as GPUs by using parallel sum uh, algorithms. Now, this is fine as long as k is somewhat smallish, some value that we can enumerate. But if k gets extremely large, like in a combinatorial set, this becomes problematic. And there's lots of examples of this in natural language processing. Uh, classical examples include the number of binary trees over a sequence, or the number of alignments between words in different languages, or all possible part of speech taggings of a given sentence. Each of these sets is exponentially large with respect to their inputs. So the idea that we could somehow enumerate them no matter how big our GPU is um, a little problematic. Instead, we have to use an approach known as conditional random fields. Conditional random fields are a generalization of softmax for combinatorial distributions. And the key simplifying assumption is that we're going to assume that instead of having a logit for each one of the possible elements of the set, we're instead going to have a log potential for each part of each element. And instead of computing the probability of every one of these exponential uh, values, we're instead going to compute the marginal probability of each one of these parts. So on the right-hand side of the slide, you can see that a softmax maps from logits to a single distribution, whereas a conditional random field maps from log potentials to a set of part marginals, or the probability of any given part occurring. So this is a bit abstract. Let's look at a concrete example. So here we're gonna take the classic problem of computing a distribution of binary trees over a fixed length sequence. There are an exponential number of these trees but we would like to still utilize this distribution without enumerating it. To do so, we first uh, specify a log potential for each one of the parts. Here, the parts will represent a split in this tree over a given segment of the input. We'll represent these as a matrix of brown squares on the right, where each square represents a given split. And if you squint, you can kind of see how that represents a full tree. Now, we need to specify a log potential for every part in the model. And we do this by producing a matrix like the one on the right, where we have a log potential for every possible split that can occur. We're going to use this relatively small matrix in order to specify a distribution over an exponential number of trees. Once we do this, we start with these log potentials. We can compute specific properties of this distribution. For instance, if we want to know the highest scoring tree or most likely tree in the distribution, we simply compute the argmax. If we want to sample from the distribution, we can here sample five different trees 
where each uh, square represents uh, how often a given split occurred among those five trees. Finally, we can compute the marginal distribution, where here each square represents the exact likelihood of a given split occurring within the full distribution. This represents the key properties that you would utilize from a conditional random field, but it's also the complete API of torch struct. You can use torch struct in the following manner, where we specify log potentials as a given tensor, and then query properties like argmax, sampling, and marginals simply by one line of code asking the distribution to provide those properties. So to summarize, what is torch struct? Torch struct is the missing combinatorial softmax operator for PyTorch. The goal of the library is to make everything as easy to use as using softmax. That will allow us to build algorithms for structured classification, structured attention, structured stochastic algorithms like Gumball softmax and variational autoencoders, and structured forms of regularization such as entropy regularization. So that's what the algorithm does, but how does it work? Well, under the hood, torch struct is implemented as a collection of two classes. First, it's a collection of algorithms. Each of these algorithms implements a generic form of a conditional random field log partition function A. An example of one of these functions is written on the right. This function implements the classic CKY algorithm in a form that allows us to efficiently calculate the log partition function over a distribution of binary trees. Each of these algorithms is written in a generic way that allows us to specialize it using semi-rings. In particular, we write the mathematical operations in the core inner loop of the algorithm in a way that lets us easily substitute in different semi-ring algorithms. This classic trick allows us to use the same code to compute different properties of the underlying distribution. Here, when we computed all the different properties of our tree distribution, argmax, sample, and marginals, we were simply substituting in a different semi-ring to that underlying algorithm. All of these approaches utilize the same code. Specifically, underlying torch struct are the following algorithms. We have an implementation of linear chain or hidden Markov model algorithms, implementation of alignment algorithms such as dynamic time warping and biological sequence alignment, implementations of semi-Markov models for chunking and segmentation, implementation of tree algorithms for context-free grammar and CKY, implementations of dependency tree algorithms both projective dynamic programming algorithms and non-projective spanning tree algorithms. Finally, we have approximate algorithms for autoregressive models, such as greedy decoding and beam search. As I mentioned earlier, each of these algorithms is written in such a way that we can substitute in different semi-rings in order to compute different properties. In this example here, we use dynamic time warping to align two sequences and we show what the alignments look like under marginals, argmax, sampling, multi-sampling, k argmax, and differentiable dynamic programming semi-rings, for instance, a sparse max operator. Now, finally, you might ask, if these algorithms are relatively straightforward to implement, why aren't they more widely used? My theory is that uh, these algorithms tend to be slower in practice than standard approaches like softmax. And so speed was a critical contribution of this work. We implemented several different optimizations to try to make these algorithms as fast as possible in a generic way. This includes implementing custom semi-ring CUDA kernels that can be used by all of the different algorithms. We also implemented specific tricks to help vectorize specific algorithms. For instance, we include a new vectorization of the inside-outside algorithm, and we also include a parallel scan approach for implementing classical hidden Markov model forward-backwards. In particular, instead of implementing this algorithm in a left-to-right manner, we implement it based on a tree style, where we simply produce a balanced tree and compute the semi-ring from a bottom-up style. 
This allows us to produce an algorithm that scales sublinearly in the length of the sequence, particularly on GPUs. So to summarize, this is an introduction and demo paper for Torch Struct. Given that softmax is so widely used in natural language processing, why can't conditional random fields also be utilized just as easily? Torch Struct tries to make this approach both easy to use and also fast on modern hardware. All the code is open source and available, and we welcome contributors. Also, the main goal of this approach was simply to build something cool, and we encourage people to use this in their own research. In the bottom of the slide, I show a GIF from a recent paper we used. Uh, we utilize this approach to, uh, to build an approach for parallel translation that would both scale efficiently and also be quite accurate. Thank you very much.